Today, we're going to settle the most important question in Baldur's Gate 3. Which character has the best romance arc in the game? With nearly a dozen characters to choose from, it's easy to get overwhelmed. But today, we're going to construct the ultimate romance tier list that no one could possibly disagree with. Because who better to construct an unbiased tier list than me, Big Dan? So buckle up, grab some iced coffee, and let's dive into the list. Starting things off with Shadowheart. Who doesn't want a hot goth GF? Well, now you can have one in Shadowheart. Sure, she might turn her hair blonde later in the game, depending on your choices, but she's still got that wild streak we all love. But underneath it all, there's a great sadness with Shadowheart too, as she grapples with fear and loss. Loss of her memories, her innocence, and her parents. I love all the twists and turns of this relationship as Shadowheart opens up to you, shares her fears, and eventually her love with you. It's a beautiful romance and one of my favorites in the game. So I'm a level with you guys. Shadowheart is pretty much my favorite romance in this game and it's without a doubt an S tier romance for me. I just, I love the character and I love the whole romance arc and everything that really transpires between the main character and Shadowheart like teaching her how to swim and you know helping her save her parents and all that stuff like i think it's i think it's just all great so without a doubt uh shadow heart lands herself in the s tier this video is sponsored by dungeon fighter online a free to play 2d morpg action game with a retro pixel art style and fast-paced gameplay combat involves chaining together combos time dodges and strategic use of special abilities and with over 60 class advancements to choose from you'll be sure to find a place playstyle that suits you. Join players from all over the world for epic dungeon raids and create the character of your dreams with DFO's extensive customization options. While the global version of DFO has been around for over a decade, it's managed to retain and attract new players with its unique approach to RPG combat and constant evolution of its gameplay loop. Now is the perfect time to dive into or return to the game because Dungeon Fighter Online recently unveiled a major new update and season complete with a brand new zone to explore. Sea on the first world under the sky features a fantastical region where humanity and nature live in harmony and mythical creatures rule the land. Take part in a gripping new storyline to uncover the mysteries of Sion, gain powerful new abilities for your character, and participate in exciting new raids. Dungeon Fighter Online is also pumping out tons of new event content to quickly boost your power level, obtain endgame gear, and get you up to speed with the latest update. Level Up Power to Sion features a fast leveling mode to get you over level 100 quickly and rewards you with endgame gear to prepare your journey to Sion. The daily login missions from the event Event all the way from Arad to Sion reward you with essentials to aid in your new adventure, like a silver amplification grimoire and miscore box. Earn further materials by completing raids and dungeons in the Onwards Becoming a Veteran event, and before you know it, you'll have everything you need to tackle any content in the game. New players can also redeem the following coupon to receive a special welcome gift. There's never been a better time to start playing Dungeon Fighter Online. Click on my link in the description to download the game and start your adventure for free today. Gale probably has the gayest romance in Baldur's Gate 3, even if you're doing a hetero relationship with the dude. He pulls you into an illusion and paints a rainbow-colored sky before delving into some literature in a recreation of Waterdeep. The really wild part is the astral projection love scene where Gale and the main character knock boots in the sky. At one point, Gale has like six arms, homeboy trying to be Vishnu out here in these sheets. Also, given how narcissistic Gale is, you know he's done this with himself at some point. A hundred percent. Gale seems like a dude who just rolls critical success on every charisma check. Dude hooked up with a literal god, so I can see how all this got to his head. So Gale, on the other hand, uh, I feel like he's kind of in a league of his own. So we're going to create a little new tier for him over here. We're going to call this one Gay Tier. <laughs> All right, so there's where we're going to end up putting Gale. Uh, again, I, I do enjoy the Gale romance. It is pretty funny. Um, it's pretty entertaining. But um, yeah, I, I one of the things I find interesting about Gale, too, is he just he seems to get away with everything. Like all these massive mistakes he makes that are his own doing, like with 
Mistra and the Netherese orb. He like always seems to get his way out of it at the end of the day. Ah, oh, Will. What can I say about Youngblood Raven Guard? I think Homeboy is a bit too soy for my liking. Don't get me wrong, he's a nice guy, and he's painfully chivalrous and striving for good. But Homeboy is just a bit goofy, which is captured perfectly by the dancing scene. Bro, I could not stop laughing the first time I saw this cutscene. Mind you, I was fully involved in Carlac's romance at the time, having just fixed her infernal engine with Damon. So I was expecting to be greeted with my tiefling bay that night in camp, but instead I found Will practicing his ballerina moves under the moonlight. But if you indulge in this romance with Will, eventually he'll propose marriage by handing you an acorn. Really, dude? You can't be serious. So next up, we got Will, and, uh, you know, I gotta be honest, uh, Will's definitely not one of my favorite romances in the game, so I'm gonna drop him in the B tier. I feel like, you know, he's a solid character, but definitely not one of my favorite romances in the game. Lazel is bay Zell. Sure, our cranky Githyanki baddie has a rough exterior, but get to know her and you'll never find a more loyal or passionate partner. Though just don't expect to get a good night's sleep because homegirl is always trying to kill you in the middle of the night. We fight. I test you in battle. Dance with me. Bleed with me. Bruise me so that you might possess me. Can this wait until tomorrow afternoon, homegirl? I'm trying to catch some Z's over here. Patch 6 introduces an interesting wrinkle to the Lazelle romance, allowing you to join her on her quest to bring down Vlacketh, even if you're not Gith Yankee which is something I definitely look forward to trying on my next playthrough. Lazel, also another one of those top tier romances, and for me, gotta put her in the S tier as well. Lazel is amazing. Carlac simultaneously has the most wholesome and most tragic relationship in Baldur's Gate 3. She's such a kind-hearted, fun-loving person who would make a good partner or friend, and yet we basically have to watch her face her own doom with nothing we can do to stop it, unless we want to turn her into a mind flayer or send her back to the hells. Uh, Karlak is great. Definitely love the character. Um, I kind of, kind of wish there was a happier ending with the character as I've talked about in the past. As far as her romance goes, I do like it and I like her character arc, but definitely doesn't stack up quite as well for me against Shadowheart and Lazelle. So I'm actually going to put uh, Karlak in the A tier. I get the vibe that Astarian will be many players' favorite romance in BG3 by a long shot. Given how many people, women in particular, fantasize about being bit by a vampire, remember how popular Twilight was back in the day? Astarian seems to hit all the right buttons, even more so given the quality of the writing and Neil Newbon's voice acting. One of the things I like about Astarian's romance is the many different paths you can walk with it depending on how you deal with Cazador in Act 3. If you turn Astarian into a vampire lord, you can become his thrall, which also throws a bone to those with an interest in humiliation. Or you can go with the good ending and have a more wholesome companionship with our vampire friend. This one YouTube comment sums up the duality of Astarian's romance. Good players be like, I can fix him. Evil players, I can make him worse. <laughs> Astarian definitely has one of the most dynamic relationships in the game, and while I... Personally prefer going with characters like Shadowheart. Uh, it's undeniable that Astarian's definitely an S-tier romance, so gotta put him in the S-tier, guys. Holson's romance is a wild one, bro. And not just because of the infamous bear scene. Homeboy is polyamorous, which can lead to some interesting encounters with your other companions. In fact, if you're already dating Shadowheart, you can actually convince her to share with Holson, leading to some pretty hilarious dialogue, too. If you have a chance to climb Mount Halson, well, I'd be cruel to deny you. Mount Halson? Really, Shadowheart? I just can't get over this. Shout out to Kazaliski for posting these scenes because I can't bring myself to pursue this relationship in my own playthrough yet. But what can I say? I'm a bit biased against Halson because he's a cursed obsessed loser. I feel like Halson is another one of those characters that uh, needs his own tears, so... We're gonna, you know, drop him in, and we're gonna call this Bear Tier. All right, <laughs> and then we'll put, we'll put Halson in the Bear Tier. Minthara's romance is one of my favorites in Baldur's Gate 3. What can I say? I love dominant women. The drow have a matriarchal society, and it's common for drow women to claim men as their prize. 
We can experience this firsthand if we help Minthara raid the Grove. But Minthara also shows a more vulnerable side in subsequent cutscenes as we progress throughout the game, provided we recruit her as a full companion in Act 2. She shares with us her fears, her desires, and all the things that make her tick, and I think it really paints an interesting picture of this initially really ruthless character. I feel like Minthara is going to land herself in her own tier as well, so we're going to drop a new one in here. We'll call this Dummy Mommy. All right, and we'll drop Minthara in that tier as well. Again, another great romance that I particularly enjoy, uh, but wouldn't necessarily put her in the S tier. So now we get into all the memes and flings, and uh, first up, we've got Mizora. Uh, definitely really enjoy this romance. I mean, again, it's just a one-night stand, but my favorite part of the Mizora romance is just Will's reaction to the whole thing. Why? Why not? Last I checked, you were the only one of us tied to a leash. Countless souls walk these planes, countless ways to find pleasure, and out of all of them, you chose her. Do you understand what she did? What you did? God, you caused so much sorrow, all for a damnable fling. Mizora is an absolute baddie, and so it's really fun to pursue this, but yeah, I think for me, mainly worth it just to get Will's reaction. Uh, next up, we got a Harlep, or the sort of doppelganger or like clone of Raphael, <laughs> and uh, that one ends up being sort of a Morinth style romance, so I think we can add another row down here, we'll put this one in red, and we'll call this one Morinth, and yeah, so... Again, uh, just like Mass Effect 2, if you go and hook up with Morinth, uh, if you hook up with Raphael's uh, doppelganger, you, uh, you wind up dead. So pretty crazy romance there. <laughs> we, got the, we got the Emperor again, another meme fling. Uh, I don't know. Uh, this is definitely one that I wouldn't really want to partake in, especially knowing more about the Emperor's character. I feel like Maybe a little bit beforehand when you before you know his whole story arc or like what his motives are, uh, might be interested in trusting him a little bit more. But uh, he always had kind of a sus vibe for me. And now, especially having played through the whole game, definitely not one of the ones that I would go along with. So there you have it. We've constructed the ultimate Baldur's Gate 3 romance tier list that everyone is sure to agree with. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more BG3 and RPG videos. Big shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.